If you look back at the Green Revolution, in many respects, it was a relatively simple challenge. I don't want to minimize what those pioneers did. They were remarkable. What they achieved was remarkable. It was the greatest technological success story of the 20th century. But in hindsight, it was somewhat simple. We had genes that made uh, rice and wheat in particular uh, much shorter. And if you make the rice and the wheat plant shorter, you can put much more fertilizer on it and it'll produce more yield. If the plants are tall and you put fertilizer on, they fall over, they lodge, which is the technical term. And so what had to happen was to get those genes into the rice and wheat plants, and that was not too difficult in plant breeding terms to make that happen. Then you had new short strawed rice and wheat plants. And what you needed to do was to get them to grow in large farms in very well controlled environments. By comparison, Africa is much more complicated. It has, in general, poorer soils. They're much more heterogeneous. Uh, you've got poor soils next to good soils. An individual farm may be very small, and even though it's very small, it may have a variety of soils on it. And that means that this rather simple approach will not work. In Asia, um, the Green Revolution focused very much on rice and wheat. Uh, these became dominant crops, producing very high yields. Uh, other crops were also worked on. But in Africa, there's a great range of crops that have to be worked on. Not just maize, which is quite problematic in many parts of Africa, but cassava and sorghum and millet and a huge variety of beans, cowpeas, for example, and a range of tuber crops, all of which uh, have to be improved through breeding programs. Infrastructure is a big problem in Africa. Um, the kilometers of road and the kilometers of railway per hectare of agricultural land are far less than in Asia. Uh, really good road networks and rail networks in India, for example, and actually throughout Southeast Asia and of course in China as well. In Africa, the roads often peter out outside the capital. Certainly the, 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 the solid roads disappear and you get roads that are washed away whenever it rains. So it's difficult to get things to market. There's not a lot of irrigated land. Um, only 4% of the arable land of Africa is, is irrigated. We need to increase the amount of irrigation, but uh, the potential is probably not as great as, it, uh, as, as one might imagine. And so instead of that, one is going to have to have much more local solutions. And it's not going to happen simply because outsiders come with some kind of blueprint for a farm. These farms are what individual farmers have developed and they will continue to evolve. You have to come along with specific pieces of technology that you think the farmers may adopt and you present them to the farmers and say, would you like to try this or would you like to try that? That's the way it will develop.